Let's get to General Thomas McInerney. General McInerney, great to have you with us here on the John Frederick Show again. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we understand that you've got some new information on these Dominion voting machines, sir. Well, I've got some new information, uh, John. And by the way, you're doing the Lord's work. Thank you, and God bless you. You're leading you're leading the media on this to be down in Georgia and uh, look at that and the recap, because the answer is going to be the same if we let them use the same techniques that they used in the national election. Now, here's after listening to the president yesterday, <clears throat> I'm making some very bold statements, but they're important. <clears throat> we are not talking about fraudulent voting acts. But what we are talking about, John, is treason. When you coordinate six to ten states using cyber warfare to change the outcome, these are treasonous acts. They're not dirty deeds or fraudulent voting. They're treasonous acts, punishable Mm -hmm. by death. Mm -hmm. They are trying to take over our government. When you use cyber warfare, as we're as you've seen in the domain voting systems, as well as the CIA rogue systems that they've used, Hammer and Scorecard, which we've talked about. In addition, you have no FBI or DOJ prior investigation, to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and finally, the uh, Cyber Warfare Infrastructure and Security Agency, headed up by a guy by the name of Chris Krebs, was saying it was the perfect election, no discrepancies. He's got to be an idiot, but most of all, he's guilty of treason, and the president fired him. He is part of the cabal that has created this major attack, this major warfare, and it is warfare. It's hybrid warfare in the 21st century using cyber warfare and other techniques to change a government without a shot being fired. And that's what is so serious about this. And getting those Dominion voting machines and impounding them before they change the software is extremely important. Now, what I believe the president should do, he should declare today a national emergency and declare the state of emergency using his executive order dated September 12, 2018, declaring a national emergency if there's foreign influence, because we know there is Chinese, Russian, and Iranian influence on this election. And he should use that. He should suspend habeas corpus, just as uh, Lincoln and FDR did when they met national tragedies and emergencies like this. The Democratic perpetrators, as well as the Russians, the Chinese, and the Iraqis, have not disguised this cyber war on America. It's blatant. We should start arresting them now. This is serious. Let's not call this fraudulent activity. It's treason, John, in the 21st century modern hybrid warfare. We must suspend the Electoral College and the uh, inauguration on the 20th of January until we get this resolved. And with that executive order that he's got, plus the Insurrection Act, He has the authority to do this. This is very serious. People must understand what's happened. This nation's government is being stolen, and it's not through some small criminal acts. It's through treasonous acts. And I would also declare martial law. It won't affect the American people except those people like Antifa and BLM that are going to start rioting once they know they've been had. They know they've been had. What they're surprised is is the mainstream media, except for people like you, John, are ignoring it. Fox News Mm -hmm. ignored it. Finally, they had a little bit on it today, but if it wasn't for Newsmax and One American Network on the television side, we'd have nothing. So I'm saying, American people, let's rise up. Let's set up military tribunals. This judicial system we have is corrupt. It's slow-moving. The founding fathers had never heard of cyber warfare, but they had heard of the oath that we take to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. They knew about domestic enemies, and that's what the president is is facing. So wake up, America. We've got to get this thing rolling. The president has got to 
demand a thorough investigation of these elections using his executive order that was promulgated in September 2018 and suspend all actions until it is thoroughly investigated. Everybody should demand the president to do this. We cannot proceed on because they, they quit being covert. It's blatant, outright crookery and cheating, and it's treasonous activity, John. So what do you think we're with General Thomas McInerney with us? General, what do you actually think happened to get you so to the point where you want the president to do this, these series of executive orders? What exactly do you think happened with these Dominion machines? Well, we know, John. They've been used before, and, and they programmed them. And that's why when you see the vote counts, when you see the voting, for instance, in five of the states at 2.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, TV broadcasts reported that Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia had decided to cease vote counting operations and will continue the following day. Yeah. Well, what happened was that unanimous decision by five battleground states is unprecedented and demonstrated pre-coordination. Now, in that, they were changing the voting machine somewhat because the voting for President Trump was overwhelming and it was outside their norms. And so they had to change things. And that's why they had to have this delay at 245. And then when the numbers came in, like you saw in Michigan, 138,000 votes came in at 0400. And all those other states had similar numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition, in uh, Pennsylvania, on the uh, mail-in ballots, which everybody knew was going to be a problem, the mail-in ballots, Pennsylvania sent out the state 1.8 million to their citizens. John, they got back 2.5 million. Now, who was running the printing press to get another 700,000 votes into the system? That's well, that like you got 50,000 football tickets. And 80,000 people show up. Well, General, why, you know, I heard that on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and a lot of people were traveling that day, getting getting ready, you know, for Thanksgiving, their, their family, and they had other things going on. But, I mean, that was one of the things that came out of that hearing in Pennsylvania, that there were 1.8 million absentee ballot applications. There were 2.5 million absentee ballots cast. That's a 700,000 difference which is, you know, basically the margin that, that dropped in when Trump had the 800,000 vote lead. Why hasn't this been picked up on every major network? Why is anybody even asking a question? How do you get 700,000 ballots in the system that never got mailed out? Like, how do you do that, General? Well, if you're a crook and if you're creating treason, that's how you do it. you got a printing press and they crank them out. I saw a, uh, a photo of a, kind of a big laundry thing they push around of ballots, and they hadn't even been folded, John. They hadn't even been folded. And so uh, they were driving trucks up, and so the scale of this cyber warfare and this treason was so huge that they had, that they had a lot of people involved. And when you have so many people involved, you, you say, well, my goodness, the FBI must have been tracking that. And all it, but what have we heard from Christopher Nothing. Wren? Nothing. Nothing. What have we heard from the Attorney General? Nothing. Nothing. So all of Crickets. a sudden, uh, you you wonder why I'm getting worked up. And I listened to the president, and he confirmed that he hadn't heard anything from the FBI or the DOJ. And that's why I believe we've got to move this into the military tribunals because our current court system is not designed. Our current election system. And the inauguration, the Electoral College and that, was not designed with cyber warfare in mind. The president has got to declare this a national emergency. He has the authority in the executive order and the Insurrection Act. He must act. And that's why I believe we've got to get the American people sending in to tweeting to the president, take action, Mr. President, create a national emergency. Let's resolve this. Look, these perpetrators are the same ones that created the Russian hoax. It wasn't a hoax. That was also treason against the government. 
trying to create a coup d'etat. The impeachment. The same mm-hmm. people are involved, right. John. The president has got to let the American people know. He probably had, the, pro- the president probably had 85 to 87 million uh, people that voted for him. <clears throat> and so he's going to have, because I believe he'll probably get 30 or 40 million Democrats that voted for Biden, but they don't want a crooked system. This will be the last election we ever have because, and it's going to happen down in Georgia, and if they do not cut off the hammer scorecard and those machines, if they aren't monitored and and watched very carefully, we're going to have the same outcome. It doesn't matter how many Republicans show up. You're always going to have a 3% difference in the... uh, with the Democrats winning. They are crooks. They are creating treason. And you talk about the governor and the the secretary of state down there, they're involved with it. And so we must take emergency action on it. The president's got to move out and let America know how serious this is. This is not fraudulent activity. It's treason. You're on the John Frederick's radio network. We're with General Thomas McInerney. He's has 35 years of service in the U.S. Air Force. He knows a little bit about missions and special ops, uh, to say the least, and he's with us now. General, so let's get back to these Dominion machines. There was a ruling last night in Georgia. I just want to get your take on this. There was a ruling by Judge Batten, 10, 10 p.m. Finally, after a Zoom call, had a decision, reversed it on jurisdiction, then reversed it again. And basically, he's impounded the machines. What the... What the state of Georgia, I I just want you to get your arms around this. The state of Georgia, led by Republicans, was arguing for Dominion to be able to wipe the machines clean for the runoff so there'd be all the evidence to be destroyed, wipe them clean, and their argument was because of proprietary software concerns that they didn't want this inspected because they were concerned about proprietary software. Aren't the leaders of Georgia supposed to be representing the people, not some software company, Dominion, and what their uh, proprietary network risks are? When you've got allegations of fraud, when voting numbers for the president went down after they reset it, and Biden's went way up, and there's all these allegations, what are they afraid of? Why not just inspect the machines, do the forensic analysis, and if everything checks out, then we can be done with it? What are they afraid of, General McInerney? They're afraid of being caught. They just put in this voting machine, as I, uh, the Dominion system, uh, about 30 states have it, and uh, they are getting kickbacks. At least that's what I understand from Sidney Powell, that, uh, that they're getting kickbacks. And remember when she said this last, about a week or so ago, is when they, uh, quote, the campaign separated, said that Sidney was not hired by the campaign, et cetera. Well, that was kabuki because they, they didn't want uh, the Republicans. In. But we have Republicans that are part of this scheme. Krebs, who was the CISA, uh, who I mentioned about the Cyber Warfare Infrastructure Security Agency. He was a lifelong Republican, as I understand. But he's now guilty of treason because they didn't even discover all these things that we are mentioning. And I can tell you, Wisconsin, 150,000 fraudulent votes. Uh, in, uh, in Georgia, they're looking at 96,000 absentee ballots from Fulton County. There was a water leak. All these things that you are seeing and will be seeing down there are parts of a massive treasonous exercise. It's not an exercise. It's an effort to take this government away. And the reason the reason they want to protect it is because they had a financial involvement. And uh, so that's, I mean, it doesn't make sense the way you described it. And the judge was vacillating. How can a judge vacillate on this? This is a no brainer. You're spot on. It's common sense. Well, sure. I mean, if the FBI was doing their job and DOJ, they would have impounded those uh, voting machines right away after the election on the 5th of, uh, of uh, November. What are they doing? Nothing. 
So you see the complicity of what's going on of the deep state. They all have their different motivations, but from the truck driver that drove those ballots up right up to the person that conceived this and and is running this scheme, they are all guilty of treason. And there are a lot of people. So there's so many people involved that they're going to start singing. But the president needs to declare a national emergency so we can't let them, John, wipe all these voting machines clean. Now, one of the good things is because we have the voting flows of how the votes came in, and that's on television, and it's obvious, you know, at 0400 in Michigan, 138,000 votes came in. Uh, it's obvious that when you see these and you get uh, these analytical whizzes, these guys that are just magnificent with numbers, pulling out all these uh, different things that are entirely different uh, than what uh, than what should have happened. So, uh, look, it's the down ballots. Here's the sniff, sniff test. If Biden won by such an overwhelming vote, he got 10 million votes more than Barack Obama. Please, please. And he right. didn't do a hundredth of what Barack Obama did in campaigning. And so he gets 10 million more votes. I don't believe it. But in the uh, 14 of the counties that... Uh, you can normally tell who's going to win an election. Like, no one's won the presidential election without winning Ohio. Well, they didn't win Ohio. Then how did they do it? Well, you look at these four states, and then you look at these four cities. What are the four cities? Well, Detroit, Atlanta, um, one in Minneapolis, and uh, Philadelphia. They're Democratic-run cities, and they have over 100% voting of people, eligible people to vote. And so these are sniff tests that you can look at. Even if they get these machines, some of them wiped, there's still these facts that don't pass the sniff test. And that's why it's so important that we take emergency action to get all the data that we know is out there because it's massive. To do anything like this is, is a massive cyber warfare effort. In addition, General, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, General General McInerney, is there any truth to the the rumor that we heard that that special operations forces have seized some of these Dominion machines in uh, in Europe that were involved in it? Is is there any truth at all to that, sir? I'm trying to verify that. I think on the last time it was on your show, Joe uh, John. We, uh, we talked about that, <clears throat> and those were initial indications. I have, I've heard different views going on, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm still trying to verify it. There were five soldiers killed, I now have heard, and they're trying to say they were killed elsewhere. Uh, we haven't, we, I haven't been able to re-verify that to the degree that I'm satisfied with. But, uh, but but that's something, again, why it's important for the president to right. be taking emergency. All these questions we're asking, look, we're, we're just citizens, private right. citizens. If I know this is a private citizen because right. I discovered it three weeks ago yesterday, what was the FBI doing? What, right. what was going on in our government? And, and it, it is so blatant. That's why I've, I think it's an emergency. It is so blatant, and here we are three weeks into this thing almost, this Tuesday, and the clock is running. They know this. They bought the mainstream media off. Fox mm -hmm. News flipped on it. Fox mm -hmm. News has got the same ratings right now that MSNBC has. They've mm -hmm. killed themselves just because Rupert and George Soros got together on a deal. And so this is where we are. And that's why it is an emergency. That's why all the people you see and talk to, we've got to get a sense of urgency there. Change the 14 December uh, Electoral College votes. Su suspend it. I would suspend the writ of habeas corpus because we've got to start arresting these people or they're going to start getting out of town. And some of them are going to start talking. And once you've got them talking, it's going to be wide open for us. But... You've got to take emergency action, John. All right, General Thomas McInerney, I want to thank you for being with us. And 
Uh, I think all these Dominion machines should be in, impounded and forensic analysis. I don't know if you're Dominion, why wouldn't you want a complete analysis done? Why wouldn't you want every piece of evidence scraped clean so that you can exonerate your, your, yourself and, and keep doing your business? Why are you fighting this in every state? Why are you trying to wipe these clean? That's the question we got to keep asking. Why? Why not just inspect all the machines, do the analysis? If they're clean, they can be exonerated. But they're fighting it all over the country. Why? That's the question they can't seem to answer. The layman looks at it and says, well, what are they trying to hide? General Thomas McInerney, thank you for being with us. 35 years of service in the United States Air Force and uh, has a very fabled career in the U.S. military. General, thank you for being with us. Thank you, sir. Thanks, John. You're doing the Lord's work. Keep doing it.